everyone, welcome back. And to those of you who are brand spanking new to this channel, welcome. Welcome to the channel. Now, you may have noticed I did not mention the name of the channel. And those of you who have been around for a little while might have noticed some, you know, not so subtle changes like, well, the whole name of the channel. Eh, no big deal. Ah. Shut the front door. I have spent a lot of time thinking over the last few months. And if honestly, if I'm being honest, it's been years. Ever since Casey and I started our other other business, which it's been crazy busy, way busier than we ever anticipated. Like we really thought that we would have more time to come together and film videos. We have tried so many different methods over the years for getting videos to you guys. Like we've tried filming at the store. We've tried filming at my house. I've tried filming by myself. I've tried using little bits of Casey here and there kind of thing at the store, different areas of the store, different spots. Like it's just, nothing has been working. Something has always gotten in the way. And we really, we like, we both knew that we didn't want to just end the channel. Like we both wanted to continue it. So something had to change. And that right there, da da da, da is where Puzzle Theory was born a community where we could all kind of come together and just think a little bit more deeply about our favorite hobby. Now, I, I don't think I can promise that I'm always gonna be 100% right, because I do think with puzzles, sometimes the answer to the question is often as unique as the person who asked it. But I can try to put my own creative spin on things and come up with all kinds of weird, wacky, creative theories for you. Send in your own theories, like really come together on this. Let me know what you think about what I've theorized. And maybe, who knows, maybe I will try to prove some of the other theories that are out there or commonly asked questions. I think this can be a place for anyone, like a place for pro puzzlers, a place for new puzzlers, a place for people to get advice, a place for people to give it. And then we can still have that community vibe, but just in a different way. That's just a little bit easier to do and put together. <laughs> So without further ado, let's jump into a brand new segment, which I like to call Battle of the Brands. Um, so here today, we are going to do two puzzles and we're gonna see which brand ended up actually being better. Now today is a bit of a unicorn episode because this is gonna be an exact one-to-one -one comparison that I don't know I'll be able to come across too often. Now it's very common for different companies to reuse images and things like that. Uh, it's just, it's hard to find in the exact same piece count. And it's very, very hard to find in two different brands, exactly the same image, absolutely nothing's changed. I got very lucky and I actually came across in my local Walmart an exact replica of a puzzle I already knew I had in the same piece count. And I'm like, we gotta do that for the first episode. I will be comparing the Schmidt 1000 piece Alice in Wonderland puzzle to the exact same thing, but in the Seiko version. I've always been curious about this brand. I've actually never done a Seiko puzzle before. That's not possible. Without further ado, let's get into the comparison and see who won the battle of the brands. All right, so my first impression with the Schmidt puzzle is that the box is very easy to open. The pieces seem very, very nice, very durable, very comparable to Ravensburger style pieces. Honestly, I think if you were to put one right next to each other, I don't think you would be able to tell the difference. The pieces are super thick, they feel really durable, and the colors seem super vibrant and really well printed. Now, first impressions with Seiko, the box was very hard to open. I had to really try to pry it open, and I actually ended up breaking the side of the box a little bit. The other thing that I do have to mention here, so there was tape holding the box closed instead of like a shrink wrap, cellophane wrap type thing. It did damage the sides of the box a little bit where the, the tape was adhered to it. As far as the feeling of the pieces themselves, they both feel super nice. None of the pieces look damaged. Everything looks good. They both look like they follow more of the traditional ribbon cut style. Um, the one thing that I did notice is that Seiko is significantly thinner than the Schmidt puzzle. 
you almost have to put two pieces of the Sika together to get one of the Schmidt. Here's a close up of roughly the same area of each of the puzzles. I would say that when you're looking at it as individual pieces, they both look very similar, almost no difference, both really well done, well printed. So as you can see with the Schmidt pieces, they definitely have that soft click technology to them. They snap into place super easy. There are absolutely no false fits. You are definitely 100% sure when you have found the correct piece. As far as Seiko is concerned, you can see that they do also snap together very well. All the pieces seem like they have a pretty snug home. Once they're together, there's no real wiggly jiggliness to them. However, there is a higher percentage of false fits. I did notice with some of the darker areas of the puzzle, I thought I had a few pieces right and I was way off. That was something that I didn't notice with the Schmidt puzzle, but did tend to happen quite a bit with this one. The end result for both of these puzzles ended up being absolutely beautiful. Take a look at them side by side. Can you guess which one is which? And for those of you in the audience who are like, it's the same picture. Let me tell you, they are actually extremely different. And for Seiko, in a lot of really pleasantly surprising ways. Here's a one-to-one -one comparison for small portions of the puzzle. I like the flowers here because I feel like they really demonstrate the vibrancy of the colors. Look at the difference in them. I can't believe how much more the colors pop with the Seiko puzzle. Whereas the Schmidt seems like it's more muted tones somehow. Even when you can kind of see them side by side, you notice that the green in the upper left hand corner is extremely vibrant and bright in the Seiko puzzle. You could definitely do the puzzle pickup challenge with the Schmidt puzzle. You could pick it up as seen here with this small piece, no problem. That is not fragile. However, with the Seiko puzzle, the same cannot be said. If you pick this up, it is going to be very bad news bears. <laughs> So what does all of this information mean? When we really break it down, which puzzle actually ended up winning the Battle of the Brands? I'm gonna break it down into a 10 out of 10 point system with four different categories. So the highest possible amount of points either puzzle could earn is 40 points. Starting off with the box slash first impressions. Right out of the gate, Schmidt puzzle started out strong. I have to give that a solid eight out of 10 for the, po for the box quality, for the minimal puzzle dust, for the high piece quality, easy to open. Overall, pretty good. The only thing I took points out for, there was nothing really special about it. I mean, every so often, like the more puzzles I do, the more I notice that different places are throwing in cool things like reusable bags and stuff like that. I feel like that's a really cool little bonus and an area where the brand could potentially improve. As far as Seiko, unfortunately, it didn't start it strong right out of the gate. I do have to give its box quality a four out of 10, just for the amount of damage that the box ended up sustaining, just for the fact that it was so hard to get into. And I mean, overall, the piece quality, not bad. The first impression still good. So it definitely earned some points that way, but overall it wasn't a strong start out of the gate. As far as the price slash value goes, that is an interesting category where Seiko actually picked up some interesting points. For the Schmidt puzzle, if you were to go and buy that, it's a little bit harder to track down. I did find it on Amazon. It would run you nearly $50 Canadian to purchase this puzzle, which I feel is pretty crazy. That's even higher than Ravensburger. That dropped its score down to a six for this category. I don't feel like you necessarily get the overall value for that price point with this puzzle. As far as the Seiko one goes though, you can purchase that one in your local Walmart for around $17 Canadian and I did find it on their website for $15.99 US, which I feel like is a really great price point, especially for the budget conscious consumer. And for that, I give Seiko a solid 8 out of 10. Moving on to the assembly slash overall piece quality. Schmidt started headstrong yet again. Its assembly was fantastic. No false fits, pieces belonged where they belonged. Super easy to click in pieces, no damage, just overall easy peasy lemon squeezy assembly, easy to handle pieces, good size. They get a solid nine out of 10 for that one. Good job, Schmidt. <laughs> Seiko. Unfortunately, again, I gotta take some points off 
the peace quality was good. Overall, you kind of knew that things belonged in their homes. However, there were quite a few false fits. Not the easiest to handle pieces, just with the thinness of them. Is that a word? Um, with thinness of them. Um, so again, I had to take a few points off for that. But overall, otherwise, the piece quality was pretty good, especially considering the price point. So I bumped their score up to a 7 out of 10 for this category. Finally, the overall final impressions on the project as a whole. Schmidt Overall, looking at the final puzzle, if I was to consider, am I going to glue this after? How easy would it be to take apart and put back in the box if I wanted to pick this puzzle up and wave it around in the air? Would I be able to do so? Yes, I would. For that, they score an 8 out of 10 in this category. They would be very easy, easily managed to glue this puzzle, put it wherever you want. If you want to put it back in the box, it would have excellent repuzzling value. You wouldn't damage the pieces at all great quality that way. And the initial end image is beautiful. There's nothing wrong with the print. It's lovely. Um, Seiko picked up in this category as well too. My final impression of this puzzle was actually better than my overall experience doing this puzzle. The only thing that I would take points off for, it would be hard to maneuver if you were trying to glue it because of its beautiful end imagery and how vibrant the pieces turned out to be, I gave Seiko an 8 out of 10 in this category. Thank you for a beautiful puzzle and a job well done. And results being, uh, Schmidt ended up scoring 31 points out of 40 and Seiko came in at 27 out of 40. Overall, an actually extremely close race. I thought for sure it was going to be a little bit unfair. There were certain things that played in both puzzles advantages. Overall, Schmidt did win the battle of the brands. Winner! I do feel like both are great puzzles. If you're looking for a fantastic brand that's very budget friendly, Seiko is the way to go. If you're looking for a little bit more premium quality pieces and you're willing to spend that dollar on them, Schmidt is definitely a fantastic puzzle and the way to go. Or if you're just looking for a really cool collector's item. Congratulations again to our winner of the first battle of the brands. I hope you guys enjoyed my first puzzle theory. But hey, my opinions today are just my theory. What's yours? Thank you for watching and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.